Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. I'm always talking about ways to make your content easy, but there's something else I always talk about, which is making your content purposeful. We're not just here making content for shits and giggles, people. Like we are not just doing this for because it's fun to write blogs and it's fun to interview people on podcasts. All of those things are true. We want to monetize our content. Today, I'm bringing you an expert, Patty Farmer, who is a marketing and media, I want to call her like she's just a strategist, an expert. She's a speaker. She's a podcast host. She's actually got a magazine too. Like this, this lady has a lot of things going on. And I know that whatever, wherever we wander into today, we're going to have a great conversation. But the goal of our conversation today is to help you think about monetizing your content and it doesn't need to feel gross. It doesn't need to feel pushy. In fact, we're going to talk about ways to do that in a way that feels really good for you because the purpose of your content is to lead your people someplace so that you can make some money while doing all this stuff. Patty, thanks so much for coming in today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited and I love this topic. Yeah, well, I figured you would love this topic. This is kind of your specialty. Hey, tell us a little bit about what you do and who you help. So I do marketing and media, right? So marketing, media, money, that's also my podcast, magazine, events. So everything I do is really around that, mostly because I feel like people struggle with really mastering the marketing, right? And they also struggle with how to leverage the media. And most of all, they struggle with how to use both of those things to monetize their yeah. business. And those things come simple to me. And I always like to say the thing that comes the most simple to you is probably the thing that other people are struggling with, right? Because sometimes, you know, you'll look at social or you're listening to people and you're thinking, you know, that's not rocket science. And then you'll talk to people like, well, I don't know how to do it. And then I think of things that to me, other people say that too. And I'm thinking, no, that's really a struggle for me. So we just have to know we all have gifts. Yes. Right. And we just need to recognize that that's why we like to consume content because mm -hmm. we like to consume content so that it can kind of fill in the yeah. gaps, I believe, that can really help us. I love what you said in the beginning when you were um, introducing your show about sales and monetizing and having it not feel mm -hmm. icky, because I think that's yeah. important because I think a lot of people it does. I think that the biggest mindset shift is that sales is leadership. Mm. You are leading people into something that helps them. And if you do it with a mindset of service, right? I serve, not sell. Yeah. That is everything I do. I serve, not sell. It's just an invitation, yeah. you know? And I think the reality is my coach helped me many, many years ago when I decided to be a speaker. She said, the thing is, Patty, if you give people content and yet you don't tell them what the next mm -hmm. steps are, you're actually doing them a disservice. Right. Yeah. And I think that once we shift that, it really helps. And so when you're talking about monetizing what you do, I think if you can get that shift first, it will really, really help everybody to be able to move Yeah, forward. I want to stay on this topic for a minute because I've heard this a lot. Sales is service. Marketing is an opportunity to get your problem solved or to have a great experience. Um, but I think that this, it's hard for people to create this mindset shift because there's something that they don't, they first don't trust the person who's making the offer, right? Like that is a big issue for people. Uh, but the second thing is like, you don't have, even if you didn't trust the other person, do you trust yourself to have like a back pocket thing to say, to say, no, thanks. I'm not interested. This isn't the right time for me now. This isn't a good fit for me. I feel like people like to, you know, there are a lot of shitty marketers out there. There's a lot of scam artists. And so I understand sure. not feeling um, empowered to like trust everybody. But once you trust yourself and you're like, this just doesn't seem right to me or this doesn't feel right to me or my intuition is off here or I don't connect with this person or this person wants me to do something that doesn't feel right to me. That is the moment that you can, first of all, not accept sales that don't feel good to you. But I think that also helps you lean into your content and your marketing and your selling in a way that makes you feel better about doing it because you would have to understand. And I don't think a lot of people do this. I don't think a lot of people give credit that I could say no if I didn't want to have, if I didn't want to buy this thing. Right. And so you really have to be confident in knowing what it is you need. And as a marketer, you have to be doing the same thing. Like trust your audience. You don't need to be salesy in order to make the connection with them. 
How do you feel about that? There are so many things that you said right there that we could yeah. unpack. I'm just going to touch on a couple of them that I think are important. One is no is a complete yeah. sentence. <laughs> it is, yeah. right? It's just a complete sentence. You don't have to justify it to anybody. Second, sometimes no isn't really no. Sometimes no is no, oh, not yeah, now. Not yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I think that is really, really important as well. But one of the things, because of what you said about... Um, there are bad marketers out there's bad everything every industry has good yes, and bad yes. right that's just how it is but i do understand it and i want to give an example yeah. that i think touches on everything that you just said sure. if you don't mind so the first thing is i know that sometimes people have said to me and it blows me away actually they'll say oh patty um can you send me a proposal and i always say no i can't do that and they're always they always like say what like <laughs> what you can't and i'm like no because I don't know you well enough to know what it is that mm -hmm. you need to know whether I am even the solution that you're mm -hmm. looking for, or I have the solution, or if I need to introduce you to somebody else. And to me, anybody, whether they're in marketing or anything else, can have a conversation with somebody in five minutes and feel like you can solve all their problems. You're a crappy whatever that's a great you are. Point. Right. right? You know, right. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is, right? And so for me, my gut and my intuition is that I want to know that we have a vibe, that you get me, that you understand me, that you're listening to me, and I feel heard. Once I know what your area of expertise is, which is why I'm probably having a conversation with you in mm -hmm. the first place, if you get me and you get my vibe and I feel that, everything else is yeah. details. Then we're just talking about how do we make it work? What is it that I'm looking for? Can you give that to me? Does it work in a price that I'm willing right. to pay? Is it in a time frame that I have the capacity to do, right? You know, so I think those are really details. You know, I always say, no, I can't give you a proposal, but we could deep dive into what it is that you're looking for. And if I do feel like I am the yeah. solution, I'll give you an action plan with benchmarks that we're going to hit, which I think is way more important than somebody giving you a proposal. So I think if people can realize that it's okay to ask yeah. questions and who would want to work with somebody that doesn't get them. Right. And I think to just put, hammer home this point even more. Uh, that's why you put content out there because it eventually leads somebody to that moment where they ask for a proposal or want to get on a call with you or want to find out more and your content can really help them get clear on am I the right person? Are we a good fit? So I think this all goes hand in hand together. So tell Oh, I absolutely agree. Tell me I absolutely agree. Go ahead. I was going to I just wanted you to tell me a bit more about um, how we can start like so first the mindset shift is you can't think sales is shitty. Like that's the first thing, right? You have to understand that marketing and sales are a service, an opportunity, an invitation. Um, and if you've gotten burned by that in the past, you need to work through that. But what is the next step after you're like, all right, fine, I understand. Now what? What's, what's after that? So I think from our mm -hmm. side, because there's two sides, right? There's the person who's the solution and the person who has the yeah, problem right, or right. the challenge, right? So I think that they kind of lead to the same mm -hmm. place, right? They lead to the same place. But where we're talking about content, right? So I think from the expert side, right? I think it's important that when we're doing contact content, that we realize that there is a journey, right? There's a journey for our ideal client. And I think that the biggest mistake I see with people where they don't understand or they think their marketing isn't working or it's not monetizing mm -hmm. is because they're trying to speak to all people in that journey at the same time. And I'm sure you can speak to this too. I mean, sometimes they're in this part of the journey and sometimes they're in this part of the journey. You do need to speak to them both, but not in the same post. Can you, can you like give not some examples? Not in the same piece of content. Can you give an example about that? Well, I think that a lot of times, for example, somebody may just be becoming aware that they have that problem, right? They're just becoming aware like, oh, like I didn't realize maybe that is, right? And then sometimes they're thinking, oh, I absolutely know I have that problem. And I'm kind of looking for a solution. And then there's times where they absolutely know, and now they're ready to invest mm -hmm. in a solution. Right. Right. But if they're just becoming aware, they may not be ready to invest yet. 
right? That's when you get the no, not yeah. now because they're not ready to invest. So you have to realize that when you're putting out content from a marketing point of view, you do need to speak to people who are just becoming aware of what maybe your solutions are. But you also need to speak to them with content of if they are aware, like what some of the next steps or how they would recognize it or maybe how they would start thinking about what some solutions are. But then once they get to that part, now they just want to identify, okay, now I have that and I'm ready to invest. But who is the person that I want to invest in? Mm -hmm. Now they're evaluating who that is. So you just have to know that people are in all stages of that journey and making sure that when you're producing content, that your content addresses all of them, but it doesn't mean you make a you know 700 word <laughs> post trying to address them all because the one you want to talk to might be down here and they didn't even stay longer than this because that wasn't them, right? So that's why I believe we repurpose content. You can add a little more. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. So I think that is really important and it is definitely important when you want to monetize your content. Yeah, I think as marketers, content creators, the other, beyond the, the journey that they're on is making really clear what you do as the expert, as the potential solution, and what you don't do. For example, I am often at this point in my life not looking for a group option. I want a one-to-one -one option. If I'm going to invest, I want it to be fast and I want it to be personalized. And that's just where I am. It's not where everybody is. But if people... Um, if somebody is only looking to work in a group, they have to know through your content that that's what you do or a digital product or one-to-one -one or whatever the hell you do. Um, but I think that also needs to be part of the content in order to monetize your content. You need to attract the exact right people who are looking for the solution in the way that you provide it too. Oh yeah. Delivery is really important. I feel too. And I think a lot of times what happens is people are, feeling fear mm. like they're afraid if they come right out and say yeah. that that they will like eliminate certain people like I have to tell you I have said for years and years and years that I market to mm -hmm. women and the right men mm -hmm. show up like that's just how my business rolls I always have several male clients but I have six daughters and I come from a family of five girls so with that said I really relate to women and I love working with women a few years ago when I rebranded my website, I just came right out and said, I'm looking for decision makers, action takers, and rule breakers mm -hmm. for women who want to do it their mm -hmm. way. That's what I want. It's what brings me joy. And so now if somebody says, oh, well, I have a women-owned business, or maybe I serve mm -hmm. women, okay, we can have a conversation, and maybe they are the right fit. But I'm really, really clear who I want to work with and who I don't want mm -hmm. to work with. And I love that. I think there's really freedom in designing your business the way you want to and not being afraid to say who it is exactly that you are looking to work with. Because I think the more you hone that, the more those people will self-select and raise their hand and say, oh, you're exactly who I am. Looking Which for. eventually leads to monetizing your content. So let's dive into more monetizing your content stuff. So what, are, what questions are people coming to you with or what problems are people coming to you with when they have content or marketing and they have not been able to monetize it? What does that look like? So the thing that they say most often, right? The biggest struggle for them is that they're doing the same things over and over like social okay. media, right? You know, I'm doing all kinds of social media and I spend all this time and I spend hours doing it, but it's not really doing anything for me. Or they'll say, oh, I spend all this time in groups, you know, meaning Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups, and that's not really working for me. You know, and, or they'll say, I'm spending all this money and I've invested this money in hiring somebody. But when they tell me what their problem is and who some of the things are, like programs or people that they've hired, well, they don't even address those mm. things, right? So sometimes it's that they just don't have clarity mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. right? They're stuck. They don't have clarity. They just know they want to make more money, but they are willing to just kind of do spaghetti marketing, right? <laughs> yes. You know, just throw things yep. at the wall and hope something mm -hmm. sticks and that's what they'll do. Or, or 
in the world now, what they do is they look at what other people are doing and they're like, oh, I love that. I'm going to do that too. Or they think their content looks really good or something, but it isn't really them, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, but they just think it sounds good. And so they decide, oh yes, I'm going to do that too, which also like all of those things, I'm just going to tell you, those are all not the things <laughs> to do, right? You know, so it's always important to know what not to right. do before you know what to do, right? So, which really leads into the most important thing I feel, which is building relationships, right? It's all about building relationships. And I always like to say all the time that the only difference between a contact and a contract is the R and that R stands for relationships. That. It's really where it is, right? Is making sure that you build relationships because when you do that, you ask better questions. And to me, I have to tell you, Jen, that is really where it's at. So for example, can of I give course. you examples? Okay, so here's some of the examples. People will say, oh, Patty, I get on all these calls. You know, I meet these people. They tell me you should do reach outs. You know, I do them on LinkedIn. I do them on Facebook. You know, I'm using, you know, artificial uh -huh. intelligence. You know, whatever their things are that they're doing. And they're like, they're not attracting the right people. And I'm having all these conversations. And I'll say, good, let's talk about those conversations. So I have to tell you, it is old school. And it didn't work then. And it really won't work now. If you're getting on calls with somebody and your calls are looking like, you know, this is the kind of referral I want. Oh, you yeah, don't even the know them well enough kind for of them stuff. to refer yeah. you. Yes, right? That just mm -hmm. doesn't work. Um, and when they are out networking in person or maybe on Zoom, a lot of us are on Zoom now, they don't ask the right questions. Like to me, here's questions that we should be mm -hmm. asking instead of. So I believe we should never, and when I say never, I mean never, should we ask somebody what okay. they do? I just think like, just change that question. And a better question is who do you mm -hmm. serve? Because now it's not even about them. Now it's really about the people they serve and then you should listen for who they tell you they serve because maybe you serve mm -hmm. them too, right? So that's just a better question. And so I always want to start with that. But then the other thing is when you get to the end of conversations, it's all about the ask, right? Yeah. You know. And so, uh, since I heard you say a swear word, <laughs> and I think, I guess it's okay. Here's what I always want to say. Don't be an asshole, <laughs> right? That's not even a curse, but that's good. Right? I like it. <laughs> right. But really, honestly, the things that people will ask for, like your relationship isn't far enough along to be mm. making that ask. There's so many easier asks that will help you to monetize your business. Really? if you just ask better questions. So for one, if you meet someone and they tell you who they serve and you can really see that they serve some of the best people or that you serve, right? They serve some of the same people that you serve. You really kind of get the right vibe mm -hmm. for them. Like then a question you should really ask them is, is this, you know, is this your first time at this event? And if they say, oh no, I come all the time. And now you know that they're feeling like it's successful. So they tend to go to things that are mm -hmm. successful. A question I always want to know is, well, if you are networking here and this is successful for you, where else are you networking where you're getting a maximum ROI? That's a great question. Not just like, oh, where else are you networking? We all network in more than yeah, one place. Yeah. Right? And if somebody is that fine-tuned, like, I don't want to just go from place to place to place and hand sure. out business cards. That is so sure. old school. What I want to know is where is somebody who serves the same people as me, where are they spending their time? That's helpful yeah. to me. And then I'll say, oh, um, is this, are you willing to give me the name of the, you know, a link or do, they'll say, oh, I'll invite you because mm -hmm. they want to introduce me because that makes right, them look right. good, right? So that's one way to do it because it's always about getting in front of other people's yeah. people. That is the name of the game and the best and easiest and the least cost and the most effective way to monetize your business is to get in front of the people, people who already serve <laughs> I your call people. It and I say, that's an op. People say, oh, I'm looking for speaking ops. I'm looking for collaboration ops, yeah. OPP, other people's <laughs> people. That's the name of the game. So now, you know how earlier I referred to how some of the people are doing yeah. it wrong. So I'm going to give you an example of what I'm going to say. Probably 90% of the people who are listening, to this are probably okay. doing. Um, and if you're not, then I apologize. <laughs> well, then in we're giving those people already class. solved this problem. <laughs> um, but here I'm going to talk about going into groups and how many times are you in a group? So if it's not you doing it, somebody mm -hmm. else is, and somebody will post something and they'll tell, say a problem that mm -hmm. they're having and what they're looking for. And then like 500 people, like vultures 
actually get in the comments and start talking about, oh, I can help you, I can help you, mm -hmm. I can help you. They don't really know enough either to know if they can really help them, right? So here's a better way to do it. So a better way would be if you're going to be in a group, the first thing you want to do is know what the group's about, who does it serve, right? What Do they have certain formats? And then what you want to know is you want to actually get connected to the host or the organizer. And a good way to do it, a lot of times I will go into a group and I literally already know they have marketing mm -hmm. people in there. But marketing is a huge sure. umbrella, right? It's a huge umbrella. And I always want to know. So I will go to the host and you don't know if she already has a relationship with that person or not, right? right? So I will go to her and say, hey, I noticed that you already have a marketing person here. Don't want to step on any toes. I would really love to be introduced to her so we can see if maybe there's some gaps that we can fill for each other. Maybe there's a way for us to collaborate. Um, two, I really want to know how, what's the best way that I can serve mm -hmm. your group. Like this is my area of expertise. As you a know, participant, is there something that I do that could as serve a participant? Them? You know, yes. And I will literally invite them to do the same in my group, mm -hmm. right? And what will usually happen if you do it right and sincerely? They will say, "Oh, no problem." You know, Susie. Yes, I have used her for networking myself you know, or use her for marketing. She does great websites. I actually don't do websites, right? You know, so you'll say, oh, wow, we don't uh -huh. do the same thing, right? And she'll introduce you to people and say, oh, well, let me introduce you to this person and this person's in the group. You're going to want to make sure you know that person. She'll let her do half your work for you. But not only that, because you went to her and did it right, she's going to talk about you in the group. So all the people in the group that may also be loyal to Susie, right? Right it's almost like she's endorsing you now. So now it's okay, right? So use your time wisely and know who are the people you should first connect to, which really should be the host or organizer. And then if you notice in a group, there's always a handful of people who are the top contributors that are always the ones talking in the group. And you wanna make sure that you're in groups, of course, where there is yeah. engagement, right? And people aren't just posting and running and stuff and getting to know them. So that's one of the things. The next way is we all have probably received in our email and in our social where people are having summits or they're speaking somewhere, right? And they're all talking about that. So I have to tell you, that is like gold information. I love summits, even though <laughs> a lot of times I go, I very rarely listen to them mm -hmm. live because I'm just mm -hmm. too busy, but I love doing the replays. But what I love most of all is looking at all the experts. Yeah. I love the experts. I love looking at their titles. I love looking at their descriptions. Mm -hmm. I love having them, telling them that I've seen them there and I'd like to interview them on my podcast or have them write for my magazine if it's appropriate. But the thing is, I love looking at them because they're doing something. So they're doing something like speaking or being on a summit, which means they're doing something to monetize their business, which means they're looking for opportunities right, to monetize right, their right. business, which is a perfect segue where if you have a summit or you have a podcast or you do master classes or whatever you do to lead gen in order to monetize your business, is there an area that's not your strength? Because we all like to focus on our strengths, but I always like to focus on the things that are not my strengths. I don't like to write mm. copy my least favorite mm -hmm. thing to do. It's why I publish a magazine because I decided I didn't want to mm -hmm. blog anymore. I didn't like doing it. So now I publish a magazine. So for me, I will always be connected to so many copywriters because whenever I'm going to do something, first person I go to because copywriters don't mean, doesn't mean they're always good marketers. Right. That's a very great And point. my stuff will get to the, you know, it'll get it to the marketplace faster. So they write the copy, I'll do the marketing, and it works really, really well. So look at all the places everybody else is spending their dollars marketing. That's really strategic and thinking. And they look and say, oh. It's, um, right, it yeah. is, right? You it's know? really looking at, first of all, what are your, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And then strategically thinking, okay, these are people who are out there doing this work. Then they probably want to do it some more. They might, they might be open to having me on or I could have them on. Like it's just a different way of thinking. When we need to think about monetizing our content, I think we need to be more strategic in 2023 because it's noisy out there. Posting more is not the is not the right answer to monetize, especially on socials, is not the right answer to monetizing your content. 
The other thing I wanted to kind of pull apart a little bit, you are asking really good questions, right? Like, so instead of asking, what do you do? Ask, who do you serve? This comes back to your content, because if you don't have a strong message about who you are, who you serve, the problem you solve, like if you don't have that all tidied up and your brand message is either too broad or you're basically like saying what everybody else says, it, the, the relationship won't be fostered. It won't be, there won't be a, it won't be cemented. And the other thing is if you don't have content for somebody to go check out, that is super clear. So say you've connected with somebody, they're going to go check you out. Right. And if you don't have clear content with on brand messaging and very clear about what you do and who you help establishing yourself as an authority, the, again, the relationship can't be cemented. So I really want anybody listening to this to take away Patty's point about relationship marketing and other people's people, OPP, uh, and the connection to your words, your brand message, your content, they're inextricable to me. They are. And when you're doing that ask that I was talking about a little bit, if you have a conversation with someone, a lot of times what happens at the end, you're talking to them, they'll say, and you know, we're the giver, right? So we'll be like, oh, you know, what can I do to serve and support you? And I'm listening for them to tell me. So I know, can I do an intro yeah. for them? You know, what the case may be. But have you ever been in a conversation? My guess is you haven't, but maybe somebody who's listening has. And then they'll say, well, what can I do for you? And you're like, hmm. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I can't really think of it right now. Can I get back to you or let me marinate on mm -hmm. that? And I'm sure, you know, and here's the thing. I always like to say, there's always a couple of things that I think are like one size mm -hmm. fits all. Like one of the questions that I feel like is a really easy ask is to say, now that we've had this conversation, you've got to know me a little bit better. Who do you know that either has a podcast that you could do an intro for, or have you listened to a podcast that you see and you could just tell me the name of it. Like I can go and fill out a form all by myself. I don't need them to do anything, sure. right? But if they listen to podcasts and that means their people are listening to those because those are their people, like what are yeah. they? Like that's an easy ask. I mean, who doesn't know somebody who does a podcast, hasn't been on a podcast themselves or couldn't tell you a few podcasts that are in almost any right, industry, right. right? So it's an easy, easy ask for someone that I think is really important to be able to do it. The second thing is, I wanna say is when you're asking those questions, if you're changing up the questions, and it's like I said, instead of saying, what do you do? You say, who do you serve? Or do you say, oh, well, what do you do different than everybody else in your industry? If you say any of those questions, they're not prepared for those sometimes because nobody's asked them that way. They love them, but they're not prepared. So here's what they're going to do. They're going to say, oh, wow, that's a really great mm -hmm. question. Why don't you go first? Uh, because they don't, they need a few minutes a to, one. you know, kind of get themselves together and they want you to kind of model it for them. So what I'm going to say is when you use it, it's a great opportunity because now you're not like vomiting all over them. They've asked. actually asked you to model it for them. And so now this is your opportunity to just step up and like do the right thing and be able to talk about yourselves in a way that they asked you and model it for them. So I always like to say, when you change those questions, make sure you know your own answers first, because I have to tell you, I want to say at least 85% of the time people will say to me, Oh, Patty, that's so good. I really love that question. You know, go first. Can you model sure. that for me? I'm like, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's a really great segue for them and then they want to know oh well what do you do differently right you know and stuff and so it's really a great opportunity you're not being salesy then they literally asked yeah. you so there's a lot of ways that by asking the right questions they will ask you what you really want to be able to tell them and if you're talking to people who literally have access to the people you want to be in front of i always have assets like think about what are your assets and your assets doesn't have to mean you have a podcast, you have a magazine, you have this. It could be that you are power partners with someone who does. It could be that you are cultivating relationships with people who have podcasts with the people you serve. So you can say, oh, I would love to introduce you to XYZ. They have a podcast about this. I think they might be the perfect audience for you. 
So it doesn't always have to be you. I think we kind of get caught up in ourselves, yeah. but the reality is when you talk to somebody, you just need to be able to serve yeah. them in a way that's beneficial for them and reciprocity will do the rest they will want yeah, to serve Yeah, those are you. great insights. So the number one takeaway I'm hoping people make for this year, for 2023, is relationships are vital. And Patty gave us so many concrete, great examples. And if you haven't shifted your mindset yet about sales is not sneaky or, you know, sleazy, uh, that sales is service, marketing is opportunities and invitations, um, listen to how Patty talked today. She talked about asking and being interested and being curious and being clear. Not, there was nothing in what you said today, Patty, that felt pushy or gross. Uh, these are, these are relationship building and it's it's relational it's not transactional and that's what i'm hearing from you over and over and over so a way to market yourself and monetize your content in 2023 is relationship marketing and i think that's a a big takeaway for people that and and i i wonder you know it does take time it does take effort it has to be intentional but how much time are you freaking spending on tiktok and uh, Instagram or Facebook groups where you could have had a great conversation. Like Patty and I have had several great conversations where we see ways that we can collaborate with each other, but also introduce people to each other's groups of people. And that is a much better use of my time, I think. I agree with you. And I think if I was gonna give somebody one question that they could ask yeah. themselves would be, if you were gonna think of your business as an ATM, mm -hmm. Because that's what we right. want it to be, right? Is an ATM. <laughs> the question I would say is thinking about relationships. Are you making more deposits mm, or more withdrawals? That's, right. that's like the name of the game, really. Like, are you making more deposits or more withdrawals? Because I like to say if relationships are the currency in today's business yeah. environment, how fat I is your wallet? That. Right? Yeah. You know, so that's the name of the game. Patty, tell us a the best way to get into your orbit. So the best way to get into my orbit is nice and easy. Is just go to my website, pattyfarmer.com. They can find everything, social, magazine, podcast, my assessment, everything thing they could possibly want to know more about me is on okay. my website. And that's Patty with a Y, P-A-T-T-Y, not an I. Yes. Um, Patty, is there any one last nugget that you want to share with the audience before we sign off today? I would just say that, you know, really to go back to what I said about the relationships is really lead with contribution mm -hmm. and compensation will follow. That. Thanks, Patty. You were so generous today. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure okay. to be here. Thanks for listening, listener. And I really appreciate you showing up for this podcast because I know there's lots of podcasts out there. So I really appreciate you being here. And if you could leave a review, it would be so wonderful. And I guess that's my ask for today, Patty. Can you, listener, go leave a review for the Content Creation Media Z podcast? I would appreciate it. Thanks so much. See you next week. Bye.